everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, it's wonderful to see so many of you choosing to spend your Monday evening with us, or of course morning or afternoon or middle of the night or wherever, it, um, whatever time it is, wherever you are joining from, um, wherever it may be, I'm delighted to welcome you on behalf of the How To Academy for what promises to be fascinating, hugely informative, um, ex instructional and helpful conversation. Uh, and I can promise it's those things because the book that has inspired our event this evening is very much those things. Here we go um, in my screen. Your blueprint for strong immunity, personalize your diet and lifestyle for better health. And um, it really feels like an essential read, especially at a time when um, infection and caring for our immune systems are perhaps more at the forefront of our minds than ever. And it's packed with um, wise and balanced advice that doesn't sound extreme or overwhelming as health advice often does, um, but it's much more down to earth and easy to follow and incorporate into your daily life. So I'm delighted we have the author with us. Um, she's a real expert in the field um, and she's the sort of reason and the one who makes it sound so accessible and relatable. She's an expert immunologist with over 20 years experience and specializes in understanding how nutrition and lifestyle interact with the immune system, which is what we'll be discussing, um, and is on a mission to break down the science behind our health and share the secrets of how to be well. Uh, she is a lecturer at Sussex University, also a qualified fitness instructor and health coach. Um, and so we're in very good hands. Thank you so much for joining us, um, Dr. Jenna. Oh, thank you, Hannah. That was a really lovely introduction. It's great to be here. Um, I just wonder if you could sort of start by explaining, by way of introduction, who who the book's for, because kind of immunity is obviously very different for different people, different ages, different um, stages of their life, different health. So is this book for everybody? You know what? It's a, it's a good question, actually. Um, I don't know that I've been asked that, but I would say it was the book I needed to read myself because <laughs> at a certain point I realised that I find it quite hard to translate the science into actual things that I can apply to my life. So it's for someone like me, the busy mum who kind of has an idea of what I should be doing, but struggles to do it because life gets in the way. Uh, it's for people who um, are a little bit interested in their immune system, maybe having heard people talk about COVID in the news for the last two years. Um, it's for somebody who's maybe very much uh, into the wellness world already. It's for people who are older, people who are younger. It's for anyone, really, because um, although in the title it says your blueprint, when you start to read the book, I try and lead you in ways to personalize each section so that no matter what your starting point is, and I have a whole um, series of like questions and quizzes you can do to kind of figure out where you stand and then how to take those small steps forward. And very much about how to make things sustainable. Um, you know, there's very few back doors to well-being and having a healthy immune system. It is about a lot of consistency over time, those small little practices we can do every day. So it's really for anyone who's interested and wants some sort of real tangible practical tools to get them there. Yeah, I mean, you do, it, it really is about making it sustainable, as you say, all your advice is sort of feels like your real priority was that people would, you not just pick it up and, and have really good intentions and put it down, but but stick to it. But um, I wonder if I said at the beginning, it was it's very timely and people are very much thinking about immunity, perhaps, I mean, they, perhaps now more than they have been and, and it's you know but we're talking about it a lot because of course the pandemic were you incentivized by the pandemic to, to write was that at the back of your mind when you were writing the book do you know what it, that's that's quite a funny question um it's the second book that i've written on the subject and the first book i wrote before we we knew what covid was but it actually was published in the very first lockdown right. so it, that was a, an interesting uh time because suddenly everybody was interested in immunity but i had written the book before covid was even a thing and i was very much thinking about the non-infectious diseases that actually are a huge problem for 
people like uh, like us in the UK today. So not uh, infections, but more thinking about metabolic disease, heart disease, inflammatory disease, allergies, autoimmunity. So it was written from that perspective. And then with this book, I kind of wanted to really give people tools and things they could do immediately that would add up to have um, a benefit to their health because the and the who came out and said this quite early in the pandemic that healthier people seem to do better from covid19 and i know there's been a lot of criticism of uh that not enough has been made about diet and lifestyle to um as a tool against covid19 but i think that's because it's, it's much more difficult to sort of study that in a short short period but there are so many benefits from taking care of your health and those little tiny things we can do easily every day that do mean that if we do fall sick, we maybe have a better chance of recovering. Um, and I always say how you go into an infection is um, often helps uh, how you will go out of that infection. So um, I did have COVID in mind, but I, I very much think thinking about your immunities for life, it's not just about the next pandemic because actually, um, most problems with our immune system are not the in minor infectious diseases that do the rounds every year. It is the long term chronic inflammatory diseases like allergies and autoimmune disease and, and metabolic health issues um, and obesity. And these all have an immune component. So I really don't um, I really want to, people to think about the long game when when reading the book uh, and that will have short-term benefits too but it's really about having that health span you know thinking um where do you stand today with your health and doing a little assessment of where you are today and then thinking well oh you know what i've got kids and i want to see them grow up and i want to be able to run around with my grandkids and and i really like doing these hobbies so i want to be fit and well enough to, to continue to do them for the next few decades um and that's you know for me i think where we should all be aiming um because if you can't do something now or your health is starting to cause you problems now it's probably only going to get worse unless you start to to take action but you, as you say for for life not just for the pandemic and that sort of fit, fits in the the emphasis that we need to place on that isn't necessarily where um, the sort of longevity of, of, immu of immu um, immunology isn't where sort of society has been focused. I mean, you talk about this emphasis on pa pathogenesis rather than salutogenesis. I think that's the same as on the way we we've, we've place this um, emphasis on treatment and not prevention. That's where society just is still getting it wrong, isn't it? Yes, yeah. So we have this term in the biomedical science arena where pathogenesis um, is when you're sort of suffering illness caused by a pathogen like a virus. Um, and there's the, the flip side of that term, which is a lesser no known term called salutogenesis. Um, and it's how can we move towards better health? So they're kind of two sides of the same coin and, and one's kind of preventative, um, you know, proactive in, in looking after your health and elevating your health so that you can really live fully whereas the other one's like oh we get sick and then we treat the sickness mm -hmm. um and you know there's there's no guarantees in life and i i very much i'm very realistic and i feel like I, I tread a difficult line sometimes in the wellness world i don't want people to think that you know you follow my book and you're invincible to all disease you know there's a few tips and supplements and things to do and you'll you'll have this bulletproof invincible immune system because it's not like that you know we live in a world full of germs and getting sick occasionally is perfectly normal but it's how you recover how frequently you're ill how um, much you can stay off those age-related diseases and reduce your risk and and pull the levers of the things that we can change because there'll be things like you know genetics what's happened to us in our past these sorts of things that we cannot change so it's about tweaking the things that we can change um, and I just I, I wrote the book with a lot of compassion as well, because I think that this field is so confusing for people and there's so much what I call immune washing, where companies have sort of jumped on the Im immunity bandwagon with COVID and they're really uh, slapping um, immune boosting claims on all their products in order to sell you something. And sure, there might be a place for certain nutrients and supplements and practices 
in supporting your immune system, but it means very little if you haven't got those basics in place, those foundations in place. And in the book, I kind of break it down into these five key areas that I think are the ones that we can tangibly try to 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 work on. And then on top of that, you know, it's kind of like building a cake. You've got to have a good sponge before you can put on the icing and then the sprinkles. But a cake is still a cake, even if you don't have the sprinkles. So you don't necessarily need a lot of fancy supplements and well-being practices, but you do need to really try and work on those basics. Yeah, you, I wonder what else you feel is sort of wrong with the, the immune boosting advice that we get um, from other sort of places in society. Like what, what makes this book different and why you want people to read this rather than take on board other bits of advice I mean you say you don't like the phrase immune boosting yeah I mean that's a that's one I get a I would get a lot of stick from my colleagues if I um if I was quoted saying immune boosting it has happened in the media because quite often um I'll I'll do an interview or something and they'll put the headline as yeah. immune boosting and I think oh no <laughs> Um, but it's you know it's more about balancing the different arms of your immune system we, we often talk about it as if it's one thing like a binary on off switch but it's actually really a complex dance of of billions of different components that are working in synchrony to keep us well and when we get sick those um certain aspects of your immune system are switched on and they start producing quite toxic nasty substances to fight off germs and viruses etc and that gives us these horrible symptoms that we feel when we get sick and those um toxic things that your immune cells are producing can cause our own delicate cells and tissues some collateral damage so um you have to have another arm of your immune system come in and sort of temper that fire and stop it from overshooting. So half of your immune system is actually designed to turn the other half off. And if you didn't have that balance, then you would end up, you know, in a lot of trouble. And we've seen with COVID, you know, people who get um, severe COVID, it's often they're hospitalized because their immune system has been overshooting. So they haven't had that off switch. So they've had a two boosted immune response and the same for things like autoimmune diseases which I cover in the book as well like that's uh, an inappropriate immune response that's sort of gone too far and so again that's a kind of why we don't want to always be boosting our immune system. So how much is within our control um, when it comes to our immune system to making it healthy building it building healthy immunity Presumably, um, some parts, you know, we can't control. You say it's a mix of things we can and can't control. So I wonder if you could sort of explain what, you know, how much power and agency we have here. Yeah, I, I think this is um, probably one thing that I get annoyed about but when I see really simplistic claims uh, in the media is because there it makes it seem like if you just eat these five foods or take this one supplement, that's all you need to do. But we're all going to be slightly different. So COVID has has shone such a, a huge light on immunology and you've had the global immunology community studying this virus like never before, which um, as a scientist has been fascinating. And it's also uh, reconfirmed what we already knew is that we're all immunologically very unique so every one of us will have a very unique immune system it will be similar to our, our parents because we'll have that genetic link but the genes of the immune system do a really really funny unusual thing when you inherit them from your parents and they recombine and in a very unusual way which means that the those immune cells that you will have are completely unique in their identity to what your parents had. So it's different from inheriting eye color and hair color. You know, we'll have similar features to our parents, but with our immune system genes, it's 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 um, completely unique. So that there's a reason for that. So throughout evolution, we've always lived with germs on planet Earth. Germs have always tried to invade us and find a cozy niche in our body. And so we've um, evolved an immune system to try and get rid of those. Um, and if we all responded the same way to every infection, we would probably have wiped ourselves out as a species by now because um, something would have come along like a new virus like COVID did. And, and if we all 
got terribly ill from that virus, we would um, no longer exist. So you've got this inherent kind of diversity in how people respond to infections. And that's been known for a really long time, but we've just had this huge lens shone on it during COVID. Um, so that's kind of the, the baseline genetics, but there's going to be all these different layers on top. And to say, what you know one person to a next would be quite different because their life would have been quite different so your age is a factor in shaping your immune system your genetics as i mentioned and i i have this section in the book about writing your immunobiography and this is a form of narrative medicine so it's um writing your own story and i've got lots of prompts and questions for that in the book to try and ascertain um the different inputs that have shaped your immune system to where you stand today because you're not born with a mature immune system your immune system is sort of shaped and evolved by all the different exposures and events that happen in your life so you know what infections you've had how many times you've had antibiotics um uh, any uh, trauma like actual um, psychological trauma can input uh, into the immune system and cause immune deregulation that can show up you know 30 years later um periods of stress so all of these different things will be unique for each of us but by writing it down and looking for clues you can start to figure out what's your achilles heel you know did you have a lot of antibiotics as a child um where did you grow up what uh, did you have you know a large part of your life where you ate a certain diet that maybe wasn't serving you well have you suffered with a lot of stress um, through work or, or personal experiences? Um, and that might help you to try and grasp which areas you need to really focus on most. And then and, and then the question I know you always get asked after that is how long does it take? I, 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 is, is, is turning around your immunity something that, you know, is within within a kind of understandable, viewable time frame? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest challenges that I would have as a practitioner is there. there's very few good tools to measure your immune system. So we can measure individual aspects, um, but there's a lot of different components. And so there's no kind of test where you can walk in off the street and, and they take a sample and they give you a really good picture of your immune system. And then you can come back two months later after trying an intervention to see changes. But we've certainly got um, studies that show that um, from up to two months, you can see changes in, in certain aspects of the immune system from specific interventions. So I think that, you know, two months is great, but the longer the better. And in order to do it, uh, you know, for as a lifestyle for the rest of your life, it needs to be something that's easy and consistent, things that you can do on your worst day as well as your best day. Because how many of us wake up on a Monday and we're like, we've got a new regime, we're going to go to the gym, we're going to do this, we're going to eat this. And then you get to some stressful meeting on Tuesday at work and it all starts to crumble. And then you find yourself at home that night having you know, just not done any of the things you set out to do and feeling bad about it. And so I had this real sense of compassion when I was writing the book that it, modern life makes it really hard to be healthy. You have to have some really unusual habits in order to be healthy with the way our lives are constructed because you know most of us have jobs where we sit at screens all day. We have to work really hard to make time to go to the gym but even that doesn't really negate all the time that we've been sitting and um, you know we've got this food environment that's uh, you know, making it really difficult to eat in a way that our bodies really, really crave. So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things in there.